Hi everyone, thank you for your time. My name is Stuart Brocker, I'm a Tonkin Solutions Architect. I'm excited to talk to you about Tonkin. It's a no-code process orchestration platform. What that means is Tonkin allows enterprise IT and operations teams to rapidly build business logic to automate, monitor, and manage their logic across complex systems, across teams, and utilize the systems you already have today. So by actually handling the business logic and maintaining the status of those items we're connecting within Tonkin, you can improve the efficiency and reduce delays in development time in solving those process challenges that the business units have in finding a way to be more efficient and scalable with the development resources that you have. IT is able to provide a safe environment for the operations, the makers to work in to build these automation solutions and control exactly how much data is accessed. And then operations teams can iterate on their processes and build high variability workflows that encompass not just data, but also teams and human beings. What you're looking at on my screen are my different solutions. A solution is an orchestrator of an end-to-end -end business process. So you'll see I have one for legal operations and sport operations, and revenue operations. This is where these teams can consume what we call these enterprise components, which an enterprise component is simply a database or a UI that you're using today. It could be Slack, it could be Teams, it could be Gchat, email, Salesforce service now. It's data and it's communication channels. Tonkin is the stage crew behind the scenes stitching them together. So your end users may never know that Tonkin is there working, but Tonkin is able to take a trigger from Slack and route it across multiple systems and across multiple people. So this is where a lot of the governance pieces come into play. If you're wanting to maintain these enterprise components, you simply go to our enterprise components and I can see all of the different applications I have connected. This doesn't mean they're being used, I just have them connected. IT could add a new data source, use any of our native connectors so that they can add a service account, for instance, so that they can control exactly how much data access Tonkin has. And then even once it's added to Tonkin, you could go in and track, all right, well, what solutions and therefore what makers or what users can consume and touch this particular component. We keep robust logs. We keep data retention policies. So of the data that you're accessing, which again, you control, how long is it stored for, if ever? Are there fields that you want to encrypt? So all of those actions are possible at this enterprise component level. And then if you grant access in the solution studio, then those business users, users, then those process engineers can come in and consume them, use them as Lego blocks to stitch together complex processes. For instance, here's an account creation example for revenue ops. If a salesperson goes into Slack and says, I wanna add this user to Salesforce, well, let's do that right now. That's my trigger in this case, which you can have many different triggers for a Tonkin flow. These run asynchronously, so multiple things could happen at once. The account executive might go to Slack because maybe that's where they're most comfortable working. Type in account onboarding, which this is exactly how we do it at Tonkin today. We use Slack as our intranet, as our central hub for our employees. And they would fill in this information, which triggers this flow. It triggers that they would like to have a document uploaded, so the order form for the new account, and Revenue Options is going to approve or reject or review that request, and then ultimately automatically make it within Salesforce. So to the end user, they just did something in Slack. To Revenue Operations, they got their request in email, or in this case, it will also send to them in Slack. And then the account is actually created within Salesforce. A record is kept of all of this, it is highly auditable, and we also take that document that they uploaded and apply OCR and natural language understanding to extract the text, to read the text, and determine what kind of contract is this? Does it need further review? Are there actions we want to take based on it? For instance, if it's a direct sales contract, we'll then ask the account executive again, which we know who they are because we can check their record within Salesforce, because that's one of the enterprise components we've connected. And that's a really key piece of this. If you want to understand, okay, here's an account that we're creating, who is their support contact listed within ServiceNow? You could relate those two records together within Tonkin. You can daisy chain those relationships across applications if it's in a SQL database, and then use all those UIs you currently have. So Tonkin is applying, is taking all of the data you have and applying a really robust business logic on it. It's using these unstructured data consolidation engines like OCR and natural language understanding to make decisions based on it 
and loop the human being into the process. For instance, this asks the salesperson, was this done correctly? If so, click yes or no, and that will train our algorithm that, hey, we're doing this correctly, and can trigger additional actions if you like. Again, because this is no code, I can come in here and easily add additional actions, whether they be people coordination actions, asking a question, asking for more information from a user, sending a form to gather more data. For instance, that's how Google uses us today. They monitor an email inbox for their legal team. Tonkin extracts the data, reads it, and then if additional information needs to be provided, sends an update form to the appropriate team to gather more data so that the lawyers don't have to spend time hunting people down and trying to manage their email inbox, Tonkin does it for them. And then all of these different workflow actions, whether it be let's set another wait trigger to wait for a user to respond or wait for a system to update, extract text from a document, and then take advantage of all these enterprise components that we've defined. If you've created a component of your enterprise, now the business user can take that and add it to their flow. For instance, if I wanted to generate a PDF, for instance, that's what I'm doing in this renewal tracking workflow. Once the account is added to Salesforce, we'll monitor that entity, we'll monitor that endpoint and watch for, again, additional triggers. If their renewal is within 30 days, as defined by the AE, we'll ask for additional information. Who is the, is the account going to renew? If so, please provide a renewal contact, which we'll update in Smartsheets and then create a document template and actually begin that, that renewal process. Even trigger, for instance, DocuSign if we want to, to create an envelope, create a document and send it out. Please note that we also keep what we call business reports, which looks like this. And so every time this module runs, it's going to create a record and basically track everything that was done by who, and then after the fact, hold on to that record and show you what status it's in, who it's assigned to when it was made, allowing you to pull these high level metrics. And of course you can export this out into your favorite reporting tool. We're being used by Google, Instacart, Grubhub, Eversana, who is consuming us using multiple internal custom build APIs because we're a no code enterprise grade platform. It's great at stitching together all of these people, teams and processes into one easy to use interface. So I'm sure you have questions. We'd love to take them. Please stop by our virtual booth. Thank you so much for your time today or check us out at tonkin.com. Hope to talk soon. Thanks.